All right, this is a quick follow-up tutorial. In this, we are going to discuss how to model the actual scales. So, for, uh, this are, these are subdivision models, um, basically some kind of disks. And we were ending here so far, so we had these kind of cones as placeholders. And now let's discuss how to create our real scales. So this is just another scale element and let's just dive in there. Now for subdivision models you would start off with a eight-sided polygon like so and we can put it flat on the ground. It's crucial to switch on wireframes and the next step would be a divide node which we can use to just bricker it so we have lines cutting through the centers. This must be eight sided and we should also reverse it so it's pointing upwards. Now that we divided it in the center we can extrude it inwards and then subdivide it with open subdiv so that way we have a fairly smooth and regular quad surface. Now before we go on we should scale it to fit into a 2x2x2 two by two by two. so that would be one way or we could also set it to 1x1x1. One by one by one. Um, let's just keep in mind that we should touch the borders here Um, and for shaping it we will use a point bob because that's just easier. Inside we can access the bounding box using relative to bounding box and we can quickly visualize this so that would be basically gradients from one side to another from 0 to 1, 0 to 1. And we just want to get one of these components, namely the Z component. And we basically want to change the width of this element by the Z direction. So for that we can set up a ramp parameter, which we'll set to a curve and we will call this shape. Now the shape will not be fed into the colors, but we will rather use it to multiply on the X component. So let's get the X component, it's the first one, and we'll just multiply it with our ramp. And now we cannot feed this directly into the position because the position again is expecting three components so it's the position but we are going to set the first component which is the width and override it by our own calculation which then looks more like a scale or a leaf or whatever you want to turn it into and now it's controlled by this ramp so when you start to move this you see it affects our shape and there are also some presets like hill and all sorts of others so you could lift this up on this side and maybe not so much on the other side so whatever you like after this step you would subdivide it but only if you can afford it remember this happens a few times so we could also leave it like that and subdivide it later or, or while rendering and this is also a good opportunity to UV texture it from top so that way we can apply image maps to it later on. Now the extrusion happens later in this case so we can just put it out like this, feed it into the copy to points and then when uh, this has been recreated, so these are my points, this is my uh, geometry, let's see that we connect it to the actual output. 
like so, then we can apply it to the mesh. Now you see the direction is um, not what is expected, so you would have to um, mm, yeah, simply flip it a bit. It's a little bit more elegant to start off correctly right away, but I don't think it will matter too much. And now you see they are all lying there flat and we want a little bit of a bend there. So let's just do it slightly differently. Um, we can make it bigger, which then would cover it even more. But more importantly, we would like to just, as long as it's lying flat on the ground, we'll just put up a band deformer. Now the band deformer has lots of things we can do, but for what we want to do, it's mostly a matter of minus 0.5. Direction is one, which is okay, and the length is one. And as soon as we lift it up, we can basically curl the entire geometry. And if you start early, yeah, then you could do it like this. But 0.5 is here, so if you want it to start off directly, then you would just change this value. Now, that would be put up. And then you can see this curl is basically being lifted away from the surface. So now it's just a matter of scaling it in. And all of a sudden you have a pretty comparable structure which then gets extruded just very, very slightly and by using output back you can make sure the back side is closed and then you would subdivide it maybe just once and maybe you would again only do this in the render engine and not right in the viewport but this depends on your machine and then I use a normal node which does a lot of smoothing you can turn this all the way up and that way you get the scales too. Alright, this was a quick rundown. Thank you for watching.